Hi everyone, Jeff here again. Today we're going to show you how to put a closet made shelf track system into a really tiny closet like this one. This one is uh, slightly bigger than a reach in. It's not quite a walk in, although you can step into it, but not much once we're done putting the shelving in. So this is more or less a reach in, walk in closet. And we have two other videos that we've done in the past up leading up to this point with different sized closets. One was a seven by six, or no, it was a six by six. The last one we did was pretty much either seven by six or seven by seven. You'll see we did it about a couple of months ago and it's about a 45 minute video that will be a lot more detailed than this one. We're gonna go a little bit faster on this one, not showing every single detail. But uh, basically what we're going to do here is if you look at the architecture of this closet here, there's uh, about 13 inches or so space on the right hand side and this is 48 inches by 28 deep. Now of course we never use the closet made um, automated design system on their website because it never allows you to do what you want to do. Especially in a tight closet like this they would probably just have you do a shelf that goes all the way across and that's it. What we're going to do is we're going to do a shelf going across and then an L shape. We'll have a side shelf here as well. That means the hanger is probably going to come pretty close to the edge of the door and clothes will hang a little bit into the doorway, but it's on the hinge side, so it's not quite so bad. And then uh, um, we're going up a, a nice and tall up top there, and we'll have a middle shelf going across, and then we'll have a hole cut in the middle for us to put long dresses. Then at the bottom, we're going to have a couple of shoe racks stretching across the bottom here. And that will be our simple closet here. And this blue tape here indicates where we've already found our studs. And you can see we've already marked our, our line up there going across where that the top hang shelf track is going to be. And I've got here on the floor, if you look out here, we've got all of our parts here that we're going to be using. And I've just done sort of a generalized layout here to show you what this back wall is going to look like. So we'll have the hang track going across the top and our standards here, four standards are going to be hanging off of that. And then a middle rack will be here. Now what we're going to do, like I mentioned a minute ago, is we're going to cut a hole in the middle of this middle track here so that longer dresses can hang right down in this space here. That's why you see that we have to have these four standards here because in order to pull this off to have a shelf here and a shelf here and a space in the middle, you have to have two standards here and two standards here. There's no way around that unless you want to make uh, your shelf going across maybe three quarters of the way across and then leave the gap over here. So we're going to maybe experiment with that a little and see which way we want to go, see which way makes the most sense here. Now, something I wanted to warn you about here too, since this is a four foot wide closet, we bought the four foot wide shelves, but I wanted to warn you that even though it says on the label here, four feet, guess what? These come out at about 47 inches, so they're not always gonna be perfect. And if you absolutely need that inch, then you're better off buying a six foot shelf and use an angle grinder to cut it down whatever size you need <clears throat> or you can have them cut it in the store before you bring it home i prefer to cut it on site once i've taken measurements and gone back to the thing and i know exactly where i want to cut it but in this case we're going to be left with maybe an inch on either side of our shelving when we're done because the closet's actually 48 and a half inches wide and these shelves are 47 inch so you know we're gonna have a little bit uh, on either side probably won't be too much of a problem for you. Okay, now back here in the closet, um, we find the best way to find the studs is using our little stud finder here. And then over the years, I've played with different ones and this one works the best. So here you can see you push the button, see how the LEDs come on. So you know you have some in the very edge. You're always going to have that. And then as you scroll across here, you can see right where I have the blue tape here is where it found a stud and it usually lights up the three LEDs there. 
And then as we go across the wall here, we're going to find another one where this other piece of blue tape is, see? So I've marked that one. And then we go across the wall here, and we find another one here where this blue tape is. And so that's how we know where our studs are. And to better line them up, we then you go to my other tool that I use, the magnets. So the way these magnets work here is I know where the stud is, because it's right where the blue tape is. So I'm going to start circling around the wall. And it found one already. Nope. Let me see. I heard it snap. There we go. So right there, what we did was the magnet found a screw. So that's how you know where there's a screw going right into the stud through the drywall there. So you can see it's pretty much right in the middle of the tape. And we'll normally go around the wall and try to find, you know, two or three in a row. Uh, and then uh, once you get them, you, you can kind of draw a line and it helps you figure out exactly where that blue tape has to go. Uh, because the idea is to make that blue tape come all the way up to meet our line up there that we drew. See that right there? There's our line right there. So that way, when I drill a hole through my hang track up top, I know that I'm piercing the stud. I always try to pierce at least one stud. If I can get two or three, that's all the better. All right, so you can see I've got my spirit level on there telling me where I'm level. I gotta just adjust this a little bit here. And you can see I've made a pencil line on the bottom of my hang track here so that I know where where to make this thing nice and level. And then I scribble in where the drill holes are so that I can put my anchors into the wall. Now, unfortunately, none of these holes lines over a stud. So I always like to make sure I get at least one or two in a stud. So what I do here is I drag my standard over to here to just line up with my blue tape where I know there's a stud. And right there, I made a mark on the top of the hang track. That's where I have to drill a hole in the hang track so that I can run a screw that will go directly into the wood. I don't, even with the best anchors in the world, I don't like to leave these things just a, a, what I call naked without piercing any of the studs. All right, so you can see I've already secured the hang track here with the first screw here. And I like to keep my magnetic uh, spirit level on top to make sure that we're pretty smack dab in the middle there. So now I have the other ones over here where I marked them and I, you can see I had to drill my hole there so I knew that it would be lined up over the stud. And for attaching these, I like to use these screws here. These are the cabinet screws actually. These are two and a half inch long cabinet screws. But what I like about them is they're white and they got those big heads on them. And if you look at them, uh, let's try to get it in focus there. That's a star head. And so these come with their own star bit, which is really great. It's a non-slip T15 star bit. You can see it right there. So these never slip. And so I, I really like to use these. So there you go. That's why I like them. They get the big heads on them and they've got great grabbing power and great holding power in there. So now since I'm going to have these three screws into studs, I won't need to run any screws through these other holes that the manufacturer included because they won't be going through any stud. Now normally if you can't go through a stud, you would have to use these other holes and just put anchors into the wall. And I just wanted to show you, you could use an anchor like this one. This is pretty heavy duty. You would have to drill like a half inch hole first. And uh, these will hold probably a couple of hundred pounds each. And this would be another type of anchor you can use. But see, I always use metal anchors that somehow become a cross brace on the back of the drywall. Don't ever use plastic. Don't ever use an anchor that just screws in that doesn't have any type of brace on the back. Spend the bucks and use the right type of anchors. But right now we're hoping to avoid having to use this on the, the horizontal track. 
because we're screwing them directly into the studs. We may use these on the standards that hang down off of that horizontal shelf track. Well, now we have the first standard is screwed in tight and he's right into the stud. So this thing's definitely not going anywhere ever, no matter what. The house will come down around this thing before it ever falls off. So all of these, both these pieces here, are 100% into the studs. So now we'll start hanging the other standards. All right, so now we have our second standard. You can see it was screwed in here. And we always leave our magnetic spirit level on there to make sure that we're not drifting out of the vertical here. We want it to be nice and vertical. And so there's one screw there. I come down here and there's another screw here. Another one here. And lastly, another one down at the bottom. I got four here. Normally the manufacturer tells you to put at least one screw, but I will always put a screw wherever there's a screw hole. I don't like minimum code. I always like to surpass whatever they say. That way we're sure the thing will never come off the wall ever. Well, after a little bit of deliberation, we decided to move this standard closer to the edge of the track because remember the brackets are gonna sit on here and stick out and your wire shelf will hang on that bracket. And you don't want your wire shelf to hang more than four or five inches beyond uh, one of the brackets, so you pretty much want it to be here. So we moved it over about five or six inches from the spot where we just mounted it here. And we'll patch these up. That's really the better spot for it. And if you look at the other side here, you know, we're pretty close. We're about six inches off the edge there uh, from the wall. So the wire, uh, the wire shelf will overhang about six inches or so off of that standard there. So because we are no longer over a stud, we now have to switch to using this metal anchor here, which is self-tapping. We'll drill it right into the wall here. Once it's in the wall and we go to run the screw through it here, you'll see it'll force this wing uh, here to open up behind the wall. And then as we tighten it down, it sucks this back up against the back side of the wall, holding everything in place. place there we just have to do three more of these so what we do is we tighten the screw down and as it tightens down you'll feel it grab a hold of the anchor and it will snug the bracket on the back to the back of the drywall and you'll feel it get tight right there see I usually use my lowest setting on the drill here see I'm on number one the reason why I do that, or you can even do it with a hand driver too, is you don't want to strip anything out of the wall. You want it to, to very gracefully, perfectly grab the threads on the inside of that anchor and suck the thing towards you. Okay, so we have all four of our standards in. And it'll be clearer to you in a minute why you know this one doesn't go all the way down and why these two are so close. But basically we wanted at least one standard to go through a stud, so that kind of limited where that one had to go. And we want our shelf to come about three quarters of the way across and stop here so that we'll have the tall dress storage space right in here. And we'll show you that in a minute after we get the two wire shelves on. Okay, so we have the upper shelf in here. And here we're doing a dry fitting of the, the middle shelf here. And so right here with this blue tape is we're gonna cut off everything to the left so that we'll have that tall space here for tall dresses and stuff like that. It'll be about 14 inches wide from there to the wall when we're done. Okay, and a little bit of magic a few minutes later. We have now cut the middle shelf here. So you can see how you have this gap now that, that for the tall dresses to go from the top all the way down here. 
And so that's why I didn't make this standard go all the way down because it doesn't need to. It only needs to stop right here. Probably could have put an 84 inch one like I did with the others, but don't really see um, any reason to because it's doubtful this configuration will change because it's such a small closet and you do need the spot for the tall dresses and it's better that they're over here opposite from where the side shelf is now going to be coming over here. All right, so now we've started on the right hand side here. Um, we've got the hang track here for the section that's going to go right in here. And as usual, you make sure it's level and you want to make it at the exact same height as this other one here. Okay, so that's very crucial because you want you want to have the same reference point here because when you go to put this wire shelf that goes here, it's got to match the same level as this one here. So you always want to make sure you get your level across there. See? So let's go ahead and screw this guy in here. We've already got the first one in. Let's get the second one. Okay, so now I have my two standards attached here on this right hand side here. And I was able to get the white screws here, one there and one there, because we were fortunate enough that a stud just happened to be right there. And of course, another stud in the corner, you're always pretty much guaranteed you'll have a stud there. So I didn't have to drill in any anchors or anything. And so the reason why I didn't put the standard closer to the edge there is, well, you know, the, the shelf is going to hang right here like this, right? But you gotta leave clearance for the super slide rod. So what's going to happen here later on is we're gonna have a big white plastic hook that hangs right here and sticks out a little bit. And the super slide rod will come in and go all the way up against the wall there. So that's why I moved this standard over just about an extra inch and a half or so. So now we can put our shelf brackets and hang our wire shelves on here. All right, so here's our right-hand side done both top and bottom, see? And see how it was so important to get this right side track here to be at the same level as the left, because now you can see how perfect the shelves line up, textbook. So now, what we've done at the bottom here is we're gonna put in a, a shoe rack. And so I've got these three going across the bottom because I'm going to get a piece of wire shelf that goes all the way across the bottom. And I have it at the lowest setting. So you can see this is why we made these standards to come around and stop just above the top of the baseboards. So the shelf will come down this way and then we'll put another shoe shelf right above it. Okay, so here we've installed the bottom shelf here to act as a shoe rack. So being that it's a shoe rack, what we did was we turned the shelf, we flipped it upside down so that this little, let me give you a better view here. See the fence here? It's sticking up so it holds the shoes. Now the only thing about this piece that I didn't really like is, remember this is a 48 inch piece, which is really 47 inches. And it doesn't quite go all the way to the wall. I would have preferred to have cut a custom piece. See, the homeowner had bought all of these parts for me. So I would have preferred to buy like a six foot piece and cut it down so that these little rubber stoppers when they're on there will rest on top of the baseboard which gives it more support. It's not really bad. It's a little bit of movement. See, I'm over here too. But you just prefer to have it resting on top of the baseboard. So you'd want to cut a wider piece than that to make it go, you cut the piece so that once you have the rubber caps on there, it goes from wall completely over to the wall, even if you have to maybe squeeze it in and force it down a little bit, but you want it to be nice and tight, but you know, that's not too bad. So now we're going to put on the other shoe shelf. All right, so here you can see we added a second layer for the shoes here. We have a double decker here of shoe shelves. 
And then here's our regular pants and shirt storage, lower, pants and shirt storage, upper. And then over here will be the tall dresses. Okay, and then here again on the right is another section here for shirts and pants, and another section here for shirts and pants. Plus there's enough space above, there's at least 12 inches up there to store stuff up on top there. Uh, I also wanted to point out, they do make, this right here is a 36 inch long, it's a, uh, this is a, a specific uh, shoe shelf kit here, right? Uh, we didn't put it on here because we don't have 36 inches to go across. It would end like right over here somewhere. So we're going to decide what to do, whether we want to put another standard in right here, just screw it right to the wall there, and then we'll have a spot to be able to get 36 inches across. And then from here over to the left to the wall, it will be opened again back down to the floor all the way from the top. I don't know if we'll really need anything that tall or not. So we'll see, we'll let the homeowner decide what to do on that. And then keep in mind at any time in the future, they can go ahead and, and put shelf brackets here and cut up some wire shelves about 14 inches and put them across if they wanna add some more storage shelves here. There's really nothing they can do on the left-hand side here because there's really only about eight inches unless we get some skinny type uh, shelves. But the problem is, is by the time you put the super slides on here, the hangers are gonna stick way out here. So here you can see I, I hung them up, the hangers on here. And you can see there's really not much space. By the time you put clothes on this thing, there's not gonna be much room from the end of the hanger here to the door frame. You're, right now you're looking at about 10 inches max, so you're not gonna be able to really put anything over here unless you put it, even in this area, you're gonna have a problem. So that's what happens when you get these tiny little closets. There's not much you can do, but at least we were able to get this side here because we did our own custom cuts. And keep in mind, the Closet Made website won't allow you to design it this way. They're just stupid. They want you to put a whole shelf going all the way across the back. So we're able to completely maximize your closet by doing it this way. And here is the finished product. All I did was I just added the, the hooks here and uh, the glide rods here, uh, the sliders. So what we do here basically is there is a curved piece and then you just Cut the extra little bit here to go to this wall and put a cap on it. And then over here, you measure and cut another piece that starts here and goes over to the wall here. Now, one trick we do, because uh, we like it to go snug against the wall, sometimes we'll put some droplets of uh, like silicon caulk on the end of the cap and mash it into the wall there and let it dry overnight. That way it'll be much more solid. And then sometimes where you see these seams here, We'll put a little bit of silicon caulk on this side so that when you put this side in to it, it'll give it a little bit more uh, solidity. It'll keep it from ever wiggling. And if you look here too, you'll see we like to hide our seams with the hook here. So on the bottom, you'll still see the hook a little bit, but at least it's sort of protecting the seam a little bit and you won't like snag your fingers on it. But in the upper rack, like what you see right here, you would never know there's a seam right here. And then likewise, if you turn it right over here, there's another seam right there. You would never know it. So that's why it's great to be able to, to put your hooks there to hide those super slide rods there. And so likewise, that one just goes all, all the way over to the wall as well. So the way this works now is, is you could put a hanger right here with your clothes and your whole, your clothes can go up and over the hooks here, right? They'll swing all the way around. So that's the beauty of these. And then also, this allows you to make use of that dead space back down here in the corner. See, so let me show you on the lower level where it's easier to visualize it. So you put your hanger here. And so now you can see if I go above it here, see how you're able to use all that space in there? That most closets, you don't have that. Even if you have a back wall and a side wall of shelves, 
unless you have this curved super slide rod you won't be able to maximize your usage of space back in there so that's what's really great about this so this closet is now complete and this is a size and dimension that the website told us we couldn't do it but we always do it custom we make our own custom cuts on the on the side here and uh, you know you don't even have to have your hooks like this close we just had a couple of extra so we decided to go ahead and plug them in same right there all right so now i want to show you what we did in the guest closet which is on the opposite side of the wall from the closet we just saw in the master this closet is the mirror image of the one we just did so instead of the shelf being on the on the side here on the right it is now on the left in this closet and we also did the same thing we did a couple of shoe racks down here and left a nice tall space to put like tall dresses and things and we left another standard here that way if somebody wants to add a few more shelves later on or they decide that hey i don't need the tall dresses or i don't need all of that length that 83 inches there uh, they can certainly add more shelves up here because you know when you're in a tiny place like this storage and shelving are at a premium and and anytime you can fit in one extra shelf somewhere and then you know 18 inches wide you know that's a that's almost two extra square feet of storage space for you so this one is exactly the same mirror image as the closet that we just did around the corner And before I let you go, let me just show you what we did in the kitchen here, because this was an interesting house. This kitchen here, this whole wall was completely solid, and you had to walk all the way around the back behind the dining room and come in through the rear, uh, open, there's an open doorway back there. So what we did was, we, there was an electrical panel right where my hand is pointing here, and that was moved to the hall, and we put this doorway here. So now you can see all the way through to the back of the house once you enter the front of the house. It makes the house look a lot bigger and here's the kitchen these are the cabinets that we installed now these are really nice these are made by jk they're a country pattern we still haven't put the knobs on them yet but yeah these are all soft closed doors and everything and the backsplash here is awesome i did this with um, this is polished limestone and these are normally 15 dollars a sheet but we bought this at an auction of a tile store that was going out of business and it was a liquidation auction so we only paid four dollars a square sheet this is a petite french pattern so we did all this and we also had them do uh, the, the granite guys we had them do a windowsill for us so we're not even using a standard windowsill it just makes it look that much classier and then on this side here yeah that's where the stove's going you can see the stove right there it's going to fit right in here we got these cabinets over here and we did a pantry cabinet now this is a very tiny kitchen this is like a a galley almost but we made maximum use out of everything and all of these slide outs here in the pantry these are all soft clothes everything's just soft clothes and beautiful in here and refrigerator a homeowner really put in a massive one we had to take all the doors off to even get it in the front door. We had to take the front door off the hinge and take all of these doors off to get this refrigerator in here. And we used an extra deep cabinet here over the fridge. So anyway, that's a little bit more than you thought you were getting to see here when you walked in here to our video. But I hope this helps you out and you'll see a few other videos that we've done with these wire shelves and all sorts of other remodeling ideas for you as we do our various projects. So I hope you found this useful and please, please give good positive comments and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, bye.